All right, per your request, we will solve this one using specifically a matrix. Um, but on this one, I'm going to use Gaussian elimination, which just means we're going to use re reduced echelon form. No, just row echelon form. I had that wrong. There we go. But the first thing I must do is change this into a matrix course, which I think everyone else is pretty good at in here. So let's do that. All right, so this is the matrix I have. And of course, we have these phantom ones which we put in those columns there for Z and X specifically. And so on this one, um, since it's, well, it's kind of good to have a one at the top corner, right? If we can get a diagonal of ones and then these, anything to the left of the ones is zeros, then we can substitute a value for Z and then Y and then X for solving. Yeah, yeah having a one there in the top left is just a formality. But um, you don't have to. As long as you understand what you're doing, I think if it's mixed up a little bit, then that's fine. So. All right. Well, I've got a one in the left column, right here in the middle row. So what I can do right now is just, well, I can move those two rows. So now that middle row is the top row. That top row is the middle row. And the bottom row remains the same. So, now again, it's not necessary that we have that, but uh, it, it'll look really pretty. All right. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate the 3 and the 2 right here. Just so that, uh, well, I'll have zeros there. And I'll have only the one in the top left, which is what we want. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... Because I, mean, I would need those numbers to be the same, but opposite. This here is a positive 1. So if I take 1 times a negative 3, that would be from row 1. And add it to row 2, it will eliminate that 3. Right? So just working on this row, let's see what we have. So negative 3 times 1 plus this 3, that's a 0. That's what we wanted. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12 plus this 4 is uh, negative 8. Negative 3 times 1 is 3, plus the 10 is 13. And negative 3 times 9 is negative 27, plus negative 27. That's going to give me negative 54, looks like. Wait, let me do that again. All right, well, how does that affect the last row? So same idea, I'm going to multiply it by 2. But if I multiply that positive 1 by 2, they're not opposite, so I'll just multiply it by negative 2. And I'll be adding it to row 3. So, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. Mission accomplished right there. But continuing, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, plus negative 16, negative 24. Negative 1 times negative 2 is 2, plus 1 is 3. And negative 2 times 9 is negative 18, plus the 0 is negative 18. Now, yeah, I am combining steps here, though. Some of you would do this. Th those two steps that I just did right there, some of you may do in four. Not a problem, all right? All right, so on this new matrix, uh, well, I guess I will work on that first row. But first, I should work on that second row, because the idea is to get a 1 where that negative 8 is right there. Right there. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take row 2. Row 2, I'm just going to divide by negative 8, which is going to give me some funky numbers. So 0 divided by negative 8 is 0. Negative 8 divided by negative 8 is 1. Negative, uh, well, 13 divided by negative 8 is a negative 13 eighths. Kind of lame. And uh, negative 54 divided by negative 8. It does go into 2. So I got a 27 fourths. <coughs> Fun stuff right there. And I didn't do anything to the bottom row, so it stays. Well, 
Well, <clears throat> uh, what I want right now is just a zero where that negative 24 is. That green one at the bottom, bottom row, row three. Um, and then I want a one where that three is. So that's not too bad. Since I have a one in the Y column on the second row, all I'm going to do, what color do I, I use brown. So I'm going to take 24 times row 2 and add it to row 3. This will give me a new row 3. All right, so what does this give us? Row 2, 0 times 24 plus 0 is still 0. That's nice. That's the nice thing about having zeros there. Um, but uh, 24 times 1 is 24 plus that negative 24 is 0 again. Starting to look really good. And then 24 times negative 13 eighths would be negative 39. Well, that's what I got, so negative 36 here. And yeah, so that last one, 27 fourths times 24 minus 18. Yeah, we were good there on the 144. All right, now I would take that third row row 3 and divided by negative 36 that one should be a little bit better this time yes yes it is so so negative 36 divided by negative 36 is 1 and 144 divided by negative 36 is a negative 4 that's what I got all right so the way this one would work is that bottom row tells us that z equals negative 4 just by changing it back into an equation now that second equation very nice this purple one right here would be y minus 13 eighths z equals 27 fourths. And so all we're going to do now is replace the z with negative 4. So what the heck does that give us? y plus uh, 13 halves equals 27 fourths. We could go with all common denominators. But I'm just going to subtract 13 halves from both sides. So minus 26 fourths. And I got y is 1 fourth. So there's our z. There's our y. All right, then we have that top equation, which we never actually changed. So we're going back to the original second row. We got x plus 4y minus z equals 9, but now we got y is 1 fourth, and z is uh, negative 4. So if we combine these, it looks like we'd get x plus 1, well, plus 1 actually, equals 9. So I get x, I skipped a couple steps, but x is 7, that's what I got. And so this would give us the order triple 7, 1 fourth, and negative 4. Thank you, plus 4. Well, that changes uh, to the 7 now to a 4. I think I did that right. Minus 5, yeah. So corrective right there. Not 7, but x is 4.